Hello, YouTube and their crypto enthusiasts, and welcome to another episode of Equipit Crypto. Today, we have some bullish news as Germany's, not largest, but second largest bank is going to allow users of their bank, they have about 50 million of them um, all over Europe, to, to have a wallet within, within their banking system. It's probably the bank acting as a custodian that owns the bitcoin and uh, and then the the uh, users of the bank can buy bitcoin through their bank and i'll tell you why that is huge and i will also later on in the video explain why we had the crash we just had and how you can take actions to maximize your uh, gains but first, let's talk about Germany and, and uh, Sparakasa, which is the name of the bank. The reason this is huge is that it's all right, you know, if, if you're in your 20s and you have $10,000 or $1,000 or something like that and put that into to crypto and a USB stick, you are tech savvy, you know what you're doing, um, you're keeping it offline and all that. That is all right for a small amount of money. But when you're talking about millions, people who want, like boomers, who have millions on their saving accounts and want to invest in something, you want to be able to call someone up and say, either you pay me or, or you go to prison. And if this is the case with, with this German bank that they offer to custodian your crypto and uh, and you can do your transactions and they will, will take responsibility for... for um, the transfer i'm not sure how it go how it's going to work if it's going to be something equal to paypal where where you know you you don't really send it anywhere you can just invest in it or or if it's going to be just a ordinary crypto wallet offered through through the uh, uh through the the bank website we don't know that yet because this makes the crypto market available for a lot of people who are not tech savvy. I mean, people above 60, 70 years old that want to get into crypto. They can just call their bank and, and their bank will, will help them out and, um, and sort out everything for them. And that really attracts a whole new crowd into the crypto space, especially into Bitcoin and Ethereum, which I think were the ones that they were going to uh list first at least and then the, all the others will come after so this is great news and we need that today because um markets are tanking uh, a little bit lately and then now we will talk about what's going on and why it happened so we see ethereum here is struggling a little bit i had a pump earlier today um we need to keep above this line but let's look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin is just falling under the 20 moving average on the hourly as we speak. Hopefully, this is the goal today to stay above this, uh, this 20 moving average and maybe also breaking the downtrend. Uh, hopefully, this bullish news uh, from um, Sparacasa can help us achieve that. So right now, everything is about this man here and what he decides to do. The F uh, Fed Chair, Powell. And today, they are having a meeting, 15th, uh, 14th to 15th. So we probably soon see uh, another press conference. And if they decide to keep rates lower for a little while longer, then Bitcoin will pump. If they decide that the inflation... Uh, and then price changes are too severe for normal households to, to um, withstand and increase rates uh, sooner than expected, then we have to see some more downside into Bitcoin for sure. But you're probably saying, hey, wait, 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 because I was told to invest in Bitcoin because of inflation. And, and that's right and wrong uh, at the same time, because long term inflation is good for Bitcoin. In the short term, however, it's bad for Bitcoin, because if we have too high inflation, they stop printing money. And here you see the M2 money supply. It's going bananas. But if inflation gets too bad, they will stop printing money, to put it simple. They will stop um, 
purchasing uh, purchasing bonds from banks and right now we're seeing a lot of uh, money go into crypto because there are so bad returns on what is known as risk-free returns so now you get about zero percent if, if you invest your your money for 30 years but if we have high inflation and they are forced to stop this printing of money and they are enforced to increase the interest rates that will make the risk-free returns go up and bond prices go uh, down and then also a lot of money will go out of, of bitcoin and then rather return to some risk-free returns it's it's not going to go up by a catastrophic amount but, but this is what's driving fear into the equity market now and also what's driving fear into, into Bitcoin market. But this will be a short, short-term uh, fear and then probably a little bit of a correction. And then we probably continue onwards because this keep going up. It's not like they're going to stop it altogether. But if we see them coming out with this press conference with... Uh, more tapering and more drastic measures than the market already anticipated, then we will see some more downsides to Bitcoin. So I hope I made that uh, easy to understand. This whole inflation thing can be a little bit hard to, to wrap your head around, but trust me, this is how it works. And every, every time I say this, I lose subscribers, but you know, I'm here for you and I want to help you to navigate through these swings. And if you want to just huddle, that is fine. But I also want to give you confidence in what's going on and uh, how how you can get those extra gains by, by trading trading the swings with part of your portfolio. Never do that with all of your portfolio. Never sell everything because uh, you don't want to be left out in case something uh, really parabolic happen. But today I am not only the bringer of, uh, well, we had some good news, but I hate to just be the bringer of bad news. So we are going to look on something that is really, really bullish for Bitcoin. So hang on. So here we are looking at how much BTC is available on exchanges. And what we can see here is that, because we have this, this price here, and then we have um, in the black and then we have the blue line is how many Bitcoin is available on all exchanges put together like Gemini, Coinbase, KuCoin and all these. Uh, so what we saw in the last crash with this China FUD, that price came down and people were panic selling. Um, they put their Bitcoin on the exchanges. But what are we seeing now? We are witnessing a supply shock. Because even though the price is going down, so is the amount of Bitcoin available on exchanges. So there is about uh, 23,000 Bitcoin available on exchanges all put together. I'm, I'm sorry, there is 2.3 million Bitcoin available on all the exchanges. It's, we need to read from this side. So if we put together, how much could you actually, how much does it cost to buy it all? It costs about 100 billion. That's it. You can only buy Bitcoin for 100 billion. If you buy, then, then there is nothing on exchanges. But we see a clear divergence here with the price going down and the amount of Bitcoin going down. Someone is buying a ton of Bitcoin. And we can look at Ethereum as well. It's going down on Ethereum as well, but it's not going down right now. Right now, it's it's just flattening out. It probably will continue to go down, but right now we saw a little bit of an increase in the um, in the um, uh, in the supply of, of Ethereum uh, right before the sale, and I think this is probably going to flatten out before we see a complete supply shock. Um, to buy all the Ethereum left on exchanges, if they were going for, if you could buy it all to today's price, it would cost you about 63 billion. So there seems to be less, there, there seem to be uh, more um, 
Bitcoin around to, to buy uh, if you're thinking in market cap. But compared to the market cap of Ethereum uh, to Bitcoin, Bitcoin seems to be more scarce than Ethereum at the moment. So my bet is that we will see Bitcoin doing some sort of rally once all this uh, Fed FUD is, is out of the way, then I think we will see uh, uh, Bitcoin uh, taking taking a really steep uh, moonshot. Uh, that is my projection. Of course, anything can happen in between now and then. I see some people are talking about uh, a doomed house and, uh, and some other stuff here. Um, which is a chart from from the 70s or something like that but i mean these these things are only applied to our psychology um, I, I trust more in the fundamentals than in some technical analysis even though i do a lot of technical analysis myself so now for the million dollar question what should you do and what am i doing um well you should do what you want to do i can only say what i want to do and what i'm doing is that right now when when bitcoin is underneath the 20 moving average then i have most of my portfolio uh, towards bitcoin because what we see Let's see if we can find an example of that. Uh, yeah, our favorite coin, why not? What we see during when, when Bitcoin is underneath its 20 moving average is that when you have these massive gains in the altcoins, they sell off quite quickly. Um, they do not recover. Uh, so when Bitcoin is, uh, is above uh, the, the uh, 20 moving average your all coins if they get their gains or if they get losses uh, they will quickly recover from those losses and pump higher because there is sort of a, a momentum to them uh, but when we are beneath the 20 moving average on on the daily bitcoin seem to outperform uh, most old coins and we can also see that in the bitcoin dominance so after after the uh, after Bitcoin had this uh, uh, this dump, I think that was on on the third. Yeah, we see Bitcoin dominance is climbing because when when the the Bitcoin price is underneath um, the the uh, twenty moving average, uh, there is a lot of fear in the market. Will Bitcoin dip lower? Will it recover? And I think we are we are very certain. We might go lower. We might go down here and test this. We might go even lower. But with this supply shock, someone is buying all the Bitcoin. I would be more worried if we saw that no one was buying the Bitcoin and Bitcoin was just flowing into the exchanges. But that is not we are what we are seeing. We are seeing someone is grabbing these Bitcoin, taking them away from from their uh, from the exchanges and putting them in cold storage. So right now, do me a favor and do not get into old coins, uh, not even wax P. I mean, if, if you're getting into them, um, you, you can, but then you need to have a really, really long uh, term uh, uh, outlook for, for them. You, you, don't, you can't panic next week if you buy old coins now. So, so keep that in mind. But once Bitcoin turns around, goes above the 20 moving average on the daily, uh, stays there, and, and we're sort of seeing a more bullish trend for Bitcoin, that's the time to go back into altcoins, because then we're probably going to face some resistance. Also, if you can correlate that with some resistance here, find a good resistance level here on, on the uh, uh, Bitcoin dominance chart, um, and also have the Bitcoin be above the 20 moving average on the daily, then you make sick gains in all coins. Yeah, here, here's another example a sample of the, of the same thing. You see uh, see it here on, uh, on Floki, which is one of the coin I put some a few dollars into. Uh, last night we had a pump up, I think it was like 40, 50 percent on Floki. Um, and then, yeah, it sold right off right afterwards because there is a lot of fear in the market. So 
So keep keep that uh, in mind. And I think I've been rambling on for for long enough now. So I'll just wish you all a very nice day, and then let's hope uh, Bitcoin push to new highs. And I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.